Good morning, friends. I'm back again. My desires and my eagerness, and my passion towards this, this job, I would say, is now finally culminating into a result-orienting uh, YouTube channel. I am. I thank you for all of you calling me up, talking to me. I'm absolutely enlightened, and I hear so many things. And today's topic is absolutely going to touch the very core issue. This is one of the most deadliest weapon which the today's Ministry of Defence or the DG lands or the local station commander or the commander in chief proposes against us, and that is the resumption notice. Whether the bungalow is in civil area, whether it is a shop in bungalow area or anything. We all come under the same parameters. So, friends, it is very important that you see all my YouTube channels. Finally, go on to the website, and you will find all these policies or these small, small briefs lying on my website. You can very easily read them there. Make your notes and see. Now, I'll talk of a question which was picked up in the Parliament, number three five five three. Of 1970. Now, this question was answered by the then Defence Minister Sardar Swaran Singh on 16th March 1970. The government rendered a broad policy on how resumptions will take place. This policy is even printed in the J.P. Mittal Cantonment uh, Laws, Volume Two. If people want, they can go up and see it there. Now, this policy had some very simple rules and regulations, and it was divided into three parts: how and which bungalow or which house should be resumed. First of all, it said that any grant which is on a resumable tenure, the resumption will continue for defence purposes and. The word added was specific defence purposes, and further public purposes. The second clause was, if the similar bungalow or house is in a dilapidated situation. So that means nobody is living in that bungalow. That's the main bungalow. The third part it said was that if the bungalow was in higher or is in possession of the Ministry of Defence. Under the Rape Act or under the MES uh, de-hiring and hiring uh, system, so these three clauses were the main things where a bungalow could be resumed for a public purpose and a specific defence purpose. So now it's very clearly said in this very uh, statement only that if within a cantonment. Whether it is B3 land, whether it is old grant, whether it is leasehold, whether it is in bungalow area, whether it is in leasehold area or the civil area, if it is not required in coming years by the local military authority, and in that process the HOR gives request for what? Now, please, friends, understand this. It says it gives a request for change of purpose. That means his original grant, if for the residential purpose, could be converted into a commercial purpose. This is what he look for. Second, even if it is a grant and there is a subdivision in the grant due to family partitions, he could apply for that also. Third and the foremost is that he could apply for a complete reconstruction of his main bungalow. So these work could be allowed. So when there is a policy, these could be allowed to OGB bungalows or civil area houses. Then why is the system today a big hindrance in asking for change of purpose? If there is a division in the grant, they say grant is not divisible. Now, if you talk of reconstruction, they take you to the 1995 policy. Friends, I am talking of 1970. Now, 1995 came much later after 25 years. So this is a big travesty. The system and the DG lands does not come out with these policies and these letters, and most of us are unaware. 
even after the three volumes of J.P. Mittal, I have an order from the Ministry of Law, and, uh, from the Law Ministry, which clearly has written that this book, J.P. Mittal Volume 1, 2, 3, is an internal book not to be subscribed to the judiciary. So please remember these words. This book should not be brought in front of the judicial system. Because everything what J.P. Mittal has done, he has actually twisted the words. Where there was something written have, he's done had. Where there it was written for, I have scrutinized this book and given evidence to the law ministry. So that we'll talk later. Now coming to the 1957 policy, which I just read. It said this bungalows could be freeholded by giving some STR times of the 20% or 5 times, or something like this. Conversions were allowed. So what is happening? Did bungalow owners in 1970 or 57 take conversions? Did they go in for divisions? This is all has to be seen. And where is that executive? Where is that GLR? There's so many things. Today, SK Bose Committee of 2020 talks of a similar data. You know, it says that how many cases are pending, how many have been given permission. This is, I'm talking of conversion, mutation, sales permissions, even asking for under the 1995 policy for construction. So, subdivision, what is happening? When it is all open in front of the department, why is the policy not being adhered? Policies are made for the betterment of the society. Now, the second part, this policy, which very broadly said, conversion of an area equivalently would be allowed to convert an area. Equivalent area three times. Now, I am reading this through the lines. Of the authorized construction area into leasehold. Now let's say if there is a old grant bungalow. It can ask for a conversion of freehold by retaining one third of the main building and open area. And leave the two third of the main, uh, outer portion in the open area land to the ministry. And take a lease in schedule 8 of 1912. And this all has to be done voluntarily. He will surrender his rights. So that means this policy of freehold was there by even not paying anything in 1970 after 1957. I would volunteer, get, retain my main bungalow and one third of my open area and leave the rest. What are we doing? Where are these policies? Coming to this third part of this policy, it's what I just said earlier in my opening statement. It very clearly suffixed a word called specific defense purpose. So now just the mess making or a polo vault making or a house riding club making and a, you know, a converting an OGB bungalow into a school is not permissible under specific defense purpose. So friends, it said it will not be resumed. Fourth part what it said, that same. What the grant says, if the GGO has to be accepted, that you will be paid for your authorized constructed area on market value according to the terms of your grant. Now the fifth part of the policy said, okay, what are we going to do for the permission of the constructions? Now it very clearly said that permissions for construction should be granted and whether it was an old grant bungalow or a leasehold, but it should be on an undertaking that the value of the construction should not be more than 50% pay down. Under the leasehold clause where there is no subpara of resumption, those properties in the cantonments will be only acquired under the Land Acquisition Act. Now, tell me one thing, in 1957, in 1970 in the parliament, the defense minister is willing to acquire lands within the cantonments, which all the courts today say that all lands within the cantonments in the DG land says are of the government. Then why does he need to acquire a leasehold property where the clause of non-resumption is there? Friends, 
I'll share this and when I'll come to my containment code uh, proposals of 1889 and 1912. So this policy is very clear. It is available on my website. Please go. I will talk of this policy further on. And once again, I'm grateful to all of you for watching these videos and n number of people getting into the groups, getting more aware. I would again once say, please talk to your neighbor. Please create small, small groups in your containment. If you do not want to make a big group, 10, 5, any number of friends known to you where you are acquainted very well, get in touch with them, make a small group, get them in touch with me. If you want, you can add me in the group, provided you have already talked to me. You will not add me without talking to me. So this is all done. And my availability to my 57 containment resident is always there. I once again assure you, you can call me anytime 24 into 7. I am there. Thank you. Good day.